Geek TV presents Homework Hotline, the after-school show that fuses learning with fun. Watch local teachers bring the classroom on air and online. This is Homework Hotline. Hi, welcome to Homer Hotline. I'm Ken Pinkerton. I taught science at Zane Middle School. And my name is Rita McConaughey, and I'm a math teacher with Northern United Humboldt Charter School. And you're watching Homer Hotline. Welcome. Welcome. And you might be wondering why we're wearing masks. And the reason is? Well, our county has gone into what we call the red level. And so we just want to be a little extra careful and safe with each other. And so we're going to be wearing masks right. as we are live with you. Yeah, so we're protecting ourselves and protecting everybody in the studio So and protecting around us. So. I don't think I can stop smiling, though. I know. That's even like, though I'm Well, my favorite part is, is people <laughs> have learned to kind of smile with their foreheads and their eyes. Now, right. Is that at first it was pretty... Uh, you couldn't, I couldn't tell who people were, but now I'm pretty uh -huh. good about knowing who it is and things like that. So um, before we start, we had a, a, call, a question from Monica Tripp, and she asked, what makes an atom stable or unstable? Which is an awesome question, and it, it's actually one of the fundamentals of, of chemistry. Is, um, and so if you remember, uh, back to um, what's called the Bohr atom, is that in the middle of a, an atom, um, you have a, a nucleus, um, which is kind of around this. Um, and in the middle of that is protons and neutrons, and the protons have a plus, plus charge, and the neutrons have a, a neutral charge. And around them are electrons. And, and generally speaking, uh, or uh, is that the number of protons equals the number of electrons outside. So if we look at the periodic table, um, this number, this number one on hydrogen, um, it tells us how many protons that atom has. And if we get down here to one I can pronounce, <laughs> Uh, tungsten, uh, which is the W because it stands for Wolfram, it has 74. Uh, and so it's got 74 protons, which are positive, and for that to be balanced, it's got uh, 74 electrons, okay? Um, and then the electrons uh, go around the atom. They're kind of like the planets, but instead of uh, like one pla planet in each orbit around the sun, it can have more. So the first shell, it's called, uh, can hold two, okay? And the second one can hold eight. And the second one after that can also hold eight. And then what's neat about it is if the shells are full, which is kind of what nature wants, the atom becomes very, very stable. So if we look over here in this, this cool group, and these are called the Nobel gases, uh, it's like the cool group on the, uh, to anthropomorphize it, make it like a human. These are the cool cats on the periodic table. And everybody wants to look like them. Because helium's got two full. Neon's got eight full, argon has 18, 36, and, and then um, so yeah. those guys have completely full, yeah, there we go, we have a good picture. Those guys have um, full electron shells, um, and that one's kind of a little bit misleading. Um, but um, so um, if you look over here, we can go back to the periodic table, okay? So the first shell is two, two is where it really wants to be full. And, and so hydrogen only has one, which means it's, whoops, I made it big. Um, it, it's very unstable, okay? And if you know that hydrogen gas is, is uh, um, very explosive, if you remember the Hindenburg. And then lithium is, in, in, is really cool, is if you put it in water, it explodes. And same with, with sodium, which is in salt. Uh, but um, these are, and these are never found in nature. Uh, they have to be um, in a, an unstable state. And, and then so what um, atoms do to become stable is they either take their electrons and they share them, okay? And that's called a covalent bond, um, where one time maybe hydrogen is, is sharing uh, for like in water at H2O, right? So there's two hydrogens, and then if we have oxygen, which is over here, and it's got eight. So if I go 8 plus 1 plus 1, I get a stable atom, um, and, um, and that's water, okay? Um, and then other times what they do is they share, um, they can also um, um, share those atoms, or they become charged and like, uh, like magnets, and then they kind of stick together. So, so yeah, so here's a cool one where it's, uh, this is salt, um, which is um, unstable. 
you can see, and then it, it, with chlorine, and then they become stable. So, so if you have a full shell, either by sharing or tearing one off and becoming charged, you get more positives, more protons, and more electrons. Then they'll stick together because of that. So the sodium Na, uh -huh. right? Uh huh. Has 11 electrons and then 11 protons. Right, it, it, for it's stable, and then so it will share. So yeah, 11. So okay. it's so it's very unstable. It, it, it desperately wants to get rid of that that one um, extra uh, electron, and so it'll try and find somebody who can take it. And it could be one thing; it might match up with an element um, like and, uh, and then, you then said chlorine. chlorine. Yeah, CL? and then chlorine has got 17, okay. so it wants one. It's a taker. Okay. So these, th and the chlorine Oops. is one of the most reactive elements that there is. Um, and so you got, and then sodium chloride. And so what's amazing is that, that you take two elements, they're very, very poisonous to most life forms. And you, if you put them together, they become one of the building blocks of, of life. They become wow. salt. So, wow. so that's how atoms become stable, I guess. <laughs> so great question, thank you. Is that and now, back to our <laughs> Thanksgiving <laughs> feast. Math, is that? Right. Okay, so this is um, day two of Thanksgiving feast math, and we have a couple different things we're going to look at. Um, let's see here if I can get back to our jam board. Let me go back to the beginning. Um, we're going to look at estimation. How can we do estimation at our Thanksgiving feast? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to look at proportions, and everybody loves mashed potatoes, right? And gravy on top. We'll mm -hmm. talk about, do I need one scoop of gravy, two scoops of gravy, things like that. Right. And then at the end, we're going to end up with fractions and talk about pie, mm -hmm. um, pumpkin pie, especially this time of year, is right. very yummy. And then if we have time, we'll talk about turkey anatomy. Yes, <laughs> so yes. And we might what are you eating out there? Sneak in <laughs> turkey anatomy somewhere in yeah. between there. So good. something about estimation. I'm going to, um, could you pour in those green beans into oh, sure. that bowl for me? I want to go to my next slide here. So here we have a can of green beans. And one of the things I love about this time of year and when I have a feast is I like to make green bean casserole. Mm -hmm. Well, you could maybe just look at the green bean casserole, or in this case, we have just a can of green beans right. that we poured out, and estimate how many green beans do you think there are in here? That one. Huh? And Ken, what, what do you think? I how would many guess would you say? That there are 125. 125. Yes, that's okay. my, my estimate. So how can you tell if your estimate is accurate? We could actually count them. We could or actually count them. we could do a sample. Them. Oh, good yeah, idea. So, so, if we, so for, uh, looking at this, this uh, fax, this says that this has three and a half servings of one half cup. So that would be three and a half times one half would be one and a half cups and one fourth, right? Mm -hmm. So one and three fourths cups. I'll trust your math. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's say... You have to put so many mashed potato or green beans on your, your plate, right? Uh -huh. And maybe you're not a green bean lover, but but maybe your parents or somebody says, just try or a little. Uncle Fred comes over and he loves your green bean casserole, and then just, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wants a big section and then some, right? Yep. Okay, so maybe you just take a sample size and here you can count how many you have on your plate, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll just, we'll count the whole ones. Okay. And there's some halves here. Right. Okay, and actually these aren't really whole green beans, because right. green beans are kind of long. longer, right, right, right. And then w these are cut green beans. Okay. okay, so maybe I'll put it on the white plate, because I think that'll That's show a up contrast, right? a little Very bit good. better here. Okay, so how many do we got? And this holes. one scoop. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine big ones, which are, um, and then one, two, three, four, five. Let's see, here's a half. I'm going to put with okay. this other half okay. over here. All right. And these little ones. Kind of. You know, if you're a picky eater, you're probably going to yeah. think, <laughs> look, this is one, one. Right? right? I'll eat one two. green bean. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so we'll, if you're negotiating. We'll, we'll, we'll adjust this just a tiny okay. bit. We'll say how many pieces of green beans. All right. Okay, because I know picky eaters might right. might do that. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, even though it's little, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I got 19. 19. I might have missed some, but okay, right. it's okay. Somebody on, on the okay. camera will say, hey, there's actually 21. <laughs> <laughs> so we got 19. I'll write that down. Okay, thank you. You got your paper, you have a pen? I do. Okay. So in the one ladle right. or the one spoonful, 19, and then how many spoonfuls do you think okay. I could get out of here? Okay, so let's, let's count. I don't know. Okay. You so, put it in here or? Oh, yeah. Okay, so okay, that's one, it. two, three, four, five, almost there, six. six I would say seven. seven. And then this one, right? And then that one, so eight. Eight. Okay. So and you said 125 green yeah, beans? Yeah, I would guess that. So I did 72 plus eight, 100. I get 100 and 152. 152. So your estimate was yeah, pretty was close. You could even think about well, what's too high of an estimate. Uh -huh. What's the upper limit? Right. I would say like maybe 500 for this whole can of green beans would have been a bit too many. Yeah, probably. Right? right. Like um, the little ones. What's a low <laughs> range? What's a low, uh -huh. lower bound? Maybe saying 20 is too low, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're doing estimating, you want to think what's too high, what's too low, and then, you know, find your happy Just number. Fine tune it in between. Mm -hmm. that fine tune it. Cool. And you're probably not going to count all the green beans right. in the green bean casserole, yeah. but you could take a sample like we did and then yeah. decide how many of that sample are in the actual. Right. Okay. And then one, and another real cool application that's happening right now is in, uh, in elections all around the states, they do a sample. They, they pick a section, like if there's a million votes, rather than counting a million votes again, which is very expensive and t very time consuming, they'll take 10,000. And then count them, and then see if, if uh, proportionally they're the same as, mm -hmm. you know, if it comes out 50 percent or you know, 45 percent. Um, if that sample is is the same, then they know that it's a pretty accurate or a very accurate count. And if it's not, then they might take another gotcha. big sample and do it and, and see. Um, so sampling and, and for verification is is used mm -hmm. all the time. So. Mm -hmm. Sampling. Sampling, right? Okay, and so sample the green bean casserole. Right. Very good. <laughs> So okay, estimate. another thing with estimation is maybe you have a jar of buttons or a jar of jelly beans right. or something and you want to play a game, well, you can say, well, how many, right. you know, ask family members, how many, how many do you think there? are in there? And then you can have them write it on a piece of paper right. and see who gets closest. Olives? You when can you're do olives. Done. Oh, olives, would, olives be good. would be good. Uh -huh. Yep. And these are just little pumpkin... Right, so it could be anything, Decorative. just how many go in there. It could be... Mm -hmm. um, Even buttons, right? you know? Yeah. And a lot of times yeah. I take a look and I count, well, how many are on the bottom row, mm -hmm. right? And I maybe there's about six all the way across, and then I count how high it goes up. Right. Okay, so you can be more... Um, have a closer, more right. accurate estimate. More informed. More informed. Definitely okay. so. So Very estimation cool. can have a game or yeah. just look at what's on the table. What are yeah. you guys eating? And people who are out there who are getting ready for making dinners or estimate all the time. They're thinking about how many cans do I need? How big of a, how big of a green bean casserole do I need this year? If I have, you know, this year hopefully people are having smaller groups. I'm sure uh, they for are. Safer. Yep. So, so they might not take the five cans of green beans that they eat tr normally. Or they'll just have a lot of leftovers. <laughs> lots of leftovers. <laughs> Go into Christmas. <laughs> so okay. Another uh, thing about Thanksgiving feast is you may be, and I'm going to give you a plate, and I have a plate. Okay. Are you a mashed potato I person? I absolutely love mashed potatoes. All right. So we've got mashed potatoes, and we've got turkey gravy. Okay. So. I'll just take that. You want one scoop? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And then I'll have one scoop too. Okay. Okay. Now, pr 
preference, of course. Oh, I gotta make a a a well. A gravy boat. A, a little <laughs> well, a little well in right, here. Right, right. Okay. All right. So we got about the same amount of potatoes, mm -hmm. and let's say for one scoop of potatoes, it's two ladles of gravy. Okay. One scoop potatoes, two ladles gravy. My gravy's a little thick. I'm sorry. That's okay. It kind of cooled mm. down. How does that look? Is that a good proportion? That, that looks like a pretty good proportion. Yeah. You think so? I think so. For me, you, I'd only do one. You must be a I like gravy person. I like person. potatoes more than gravy. Okay, so yours, <laughs> yours then is a one-to-one -one right. ratio, right? Right. right. So you you want just one one scoop. scoop of that, right? Okay. All right. So as you're eating the Thanksgiving feast, you're going to think about the proportions. Mm -hmm. And maybe you do like all that gravy to touch everything right. else on the plate, <laughs> right? And there's uh, those of us who are separatists. Separatists. <laughs> don't who let don't, my gravy don't, touch don't, anything else. Don't let else. the green beans touch the gravy. <laughs> <laughs> I have somebody like that in my family. Yeah. Okay, so proportions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're having a feast, you eat bigger proportions right. than you normally do. Right, so right, maybe, right. Ken, you're going to have a two to There'd one no question about mashed it. potatoes <laughs> to gravy. <laughs> you're, you'd be that. Yes, did, I would, did you that need would another be no, scoop of gravy fine. or you're <laughs> so good? No, I would be good. Okay. So now I have a two to one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So And then you, you have a one and to I two. And I have a one to two. I have one scoop mashed potatoes, two scoops gravy. Mm, gravy. Cool. Okay. And then proportions are neat and ratios are neat because they look like fractions when you right. write them out. Yeah. And then we can set up proportions and that is a really good right. conversation for or another good lesson. Right. They do it. And, the, and like, do. like we said, the, the people who are shopping, they go out all the time. Of, you know, how big of a turkey do you have depends on how, how many people you're going to have come to your house that day um, or, or how long you how long what, you cook eat the turkey, turkey yeah, and all, right, yeah. all that stuff for how long you, if you really enjoy uh, leftovers, then mm -hmm. some people buy them knowing that they, they really like that. And, and um, so proportions come in. They're real life stuff all the time. You're yes. always looking at it. So. Okay. Do you have the skeleton of yeah. the uh, you a bird? talk about the bird? I so? think so. You brought the yeah. turkey up. We might as well. Okay. We'll bring it. So one of the neat things that, that uh, a tradition that was always in my family was who got the drumstick? Um, and, and so, and if you look at people, we don't have drumsticks. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, I, I, as a kid, I was kind of wondering, well, what the, where the heck does that come from? And, and so the, the drumstick, the, the fancy name for it is called the furcula. And what it is, is an extension of our, and our, the furcula is right here. I'll see if I can tilt it down and point at it. Um, it, it is uh, what we would call our collarbones, okay? But um, what, one of the adaptions, yeah, so it's this little bone right there. Um, and you can see it looks just like a wishbone. Um, it almost looks like this bone down here is getting in the way of it. Yeah. That's, a, that's the breastbone, Yeah, that's right? the keel of the breastbone, okay? Maybe turn it. Um, and so that's, and, and for you and me, that would be our, okay, there turn it that go. way. Oh, yeah, that's that even better. better. Okay, there it is. So this is the wishbone, um, and then this is the keel of the breastbone. and. So uh, it would be like our collarbone. Our collarbone comes down to and connects to the top of our, or on each side of our ribs. Um, but for the bird uh, to help it fly, uh, to make that breastbone, so, so to fly it takes a lot of muscle and a lot of power. And so birds have adapted this giant breast muscles. Their, their pectoral muscles are just massive. Um, and so that gives them the power to be able to fly. So that's the, the uh, the, well, the wishbone. And then when you're eating your, I'm going to turn it on this side, when you're eating your drumstick and things like that, birds are, it seem like that they, they, um, their, their knees go the wrong way, but often it's because their knees are up high. So this is what, this would be the knee of the bird right here. Okay. And then, so this is the drumstick, which is the, the hu uh, not the humerus, but the femur. Um, and, and then what happens is down here they have a, uh, the long double bone, the radius and the ulna, and then the, the, their ankle bones are very long. Okay? On the person, 
And this is actually the skeleton of a pigeon. Yeah, this is a pigeon. But so. pretty close to a turkey because they're they're birds. Right, both they're very, and very similar. Yeah, a lot anatomy. of the same. And then on a person, if structure. I want to compare them, so if if, uh, if you're just to make a comparison, so if you're on um, eating the thigh on your turkey, this is the bone, this is the upper leg, okay, and then this, this is the drumstick bone. This is the uh, hip. That's and, the hip, right? And this is the drumstick. The behind. Um, and then on the bird, as you can see, it's very long. This is the foot. But uh, on the bird, they've evolved a very long ankle. So these bones are all stretched out and spread out to make the bird. So, um, awesome. so, uh, so again, so the, the drumstick has those double bones, the radius and the ulna. In birds, it's very, very small because they don't need... Um, Aren't bird, bird um, bones, are they more and they're hollow? More hollow, too. Yeah, yeah they so don't they have as many structures. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, the, the adaptions that birds have made to fly is just phenomenal. Their bones are very light. Um, the breast bones are huge, and the breast, um, their sternum has gotten much bigger, so they can have those big bones. And everything else has gotten lighter weight. So. Gotcha. <laughs> so. Is, is your pigeon leaning to one side? Well, uh, his, 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 uh, one like his, side his came wing is a little bit low. Gotcha. I have to fix that. And then thanks to Zane Middle School for letting me borrow their pigeon too. So thank you, they, Zane. They're, they're very generous to, to let us have that. So I got to return that tomorrow. So so enjoy your radius and or not radius and all. And then the radi the the bird's upper when you eat the drumstick, uh, all the bones are fused. The kind of grisly thing is the hand, uh, the radius and the, the radius and all is the little part. And then the humerus is the big part. Uh, hopefully, I'm not grossing people out. <laughs> 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 I'm just and trying to picture All it. the little tiny, the weird end on it. Um, the wing? The, yeah, the, on, the, the, on the wing is, um, it's got a thumb on there. It's called the lula. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so if you look cool. at it, especially before you cook your turkey, look at the end of the wing and you'll see it, it has a thumb that sticks out. And it's called the lula. And, then, and birds use that for a break when they're flying. Very so, cool. So, yeah. All right, what else? Okay, well, I think we should do dessert. This is the most important part of I the... I think dessert. <laughs> I know my, one of our viewers on Tuesday was like, well, what about the pie? <laughs> <laughs> so... That was um, my thoughts exactly. You're, so. Okay. <laughs> so, if you have pie, this is a perfect time to practice your fractions. Okay, so, so let's say... One pie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's say you ask for one whole pie, right? Well, that one is a small number, so I, I guess that's okay, right, to have one. Well, but that's the whole pie, right? right. So let's set that it's one aside. That's my ideal piece of pie. That's your ideal. <laughs> yeah. right. How about, oh, you know what? I'll just have half of the pie. I got to go the other way. Right. So half. If you have to share. If you have to share, <laughs> maybe do half of the pie. Right. Okay. So yeah. I think half the pie might be a little bit too much. But let's put the pie into four equal pieces. And then can you can have one fourth. Okay. And I'll have three fourths. No. How about that? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> that no. won't work? No. <laughs> okay. But do you see how when we have more pieces of the pie and I only get one of those right. pieces. Even though the fr the bottom number is getting bigger, that's called the denominator, but the actual size is getting smaller right, and smaller. Because it's parts of the whole on the mm -hmm. denominator. And then, okay, and in then, the unreal world where you get small pieces of pie. In the unreal, <laughs> is that what you said? I think I think this is more realistic. Yeah, uh, I, right? I would vote for that. Side. I would say mm -hmm. that our pie would probably get divided into eight. Yeah, I think that's right. Traditional. So we have one whole pie divided into eight equal pieces, where this would be one eighth, eighth right. or one of the pieces of pie. Right. Okay, so your Thanksgiving feast might be a perfect time to practice fractions right. and look at fractions. Um, and how they compare to each other. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking, if you do divide it into eighths, so eight equal pieces, could I have four eighths of the pie? That would be would, awesome. Would that work? Four eighths of the pie? Well, here, let me make this a little bigger. There we go. 
four eighths of the pie. So you got your, your pie that's cut into mm -hmm. eighths. And if we take four of them. You want to mark on it? Sure. So how should I mark it? Maybe just count one, two, three, four. I'm going to put an R for Rita's. Okay. Rita's slice. Rita's slice. slice. Now we're talking. Rita's slice. <laughs> and Rita's slice. Right. Which means all of these would be for me. Oh! <laughs> so you get all the others. Well, I'm going to fold this. All right. And look, that ends up being the same as half. Is this? So if you fold it over, we could, let's see. So they would match each let's other. See if we can do this. Oh, perfect. So our. My oh, four eighths, the four pieces of pie mm -hmm. that were divided into eight equal pieces, end up being the same amount as what uh -huh. a I guess I turn it this way, you can see better. So, yeah. So there's a lot of lot of fractions that you can practice with your Thanksgiving right. feast. And then the rule of of uh, peace in the world is let one person cut and the other person gets to choose. <laughs> oh, I see. So speaking of cutting, <laughs> should we cut our pie? Oh, it's up to you. Or do you want to take but it to I, your family? I would like to do it into 15 pieces. 15? That's a challenge. That way I can have 8 fifteenths of the pie. Oh, that seems unfair to me. <laughs> <laughs> Eight fifteenths, then well, I would only get seven fifteenths. The reason I'm thinking that is, don't you have another pie that was divided into thirds? I think, well, we do. There you go. Here. Okay. So this one is a little bit trickier right. to divide yeah. it into three equal pieces. Okay. Three equal pieces. And you used a ruler mm -hmm. of that had an a apparatus at yeah, the end. Yeah, it's called the centering head. Right. Okay. And that let you the way I can have find the middle. three equal pieces because right. you found the middle. So now if okay. I divided those all into five pieces, would that be then would that would be fifteenths? Yeah. Yeah. That would work. So that So would each of these one thirds divide them into fifteen. Right. Okay. Then I could have five pieces of pie, I'd be very happy. All right. <laughs> do you well, want to do that? <laughs> let's say it's you, me, and we can have one other family member. Right. Let's divide our pie into thirds. Can okay. we do that? Yeah. So do you have an apparatus? Here, you've got that. Okay, and then maybe we'll get to eat some pie. So we're trying to make it like thirds, and can you show me very, use your so apparatus? That, so that kind of, so this helps us find the, the right metal. Am I using the right word, yeah. apparatus? Or the tool, okay. or whatever, tool. Yeah, apparatus. Okay. So we take it out, that would then make it a little right. easier to use. Well, let's leave it in. we're running out of time here, so. We are. So I could eyeball it, right? Yeah. Into thirds. Either way, though. Okay, so we're wrapping up. So have a very safe Thanksgiving. Remember to wear your mask. Maintain your distance and wash your hands. Be safe. We will see you after the holiday break. We won't be on uh, next week. I don't think my pie, my piece of pie, will come out. <laughs>